welcome to Exponential Equations. You should take some notes while I'm teaching up here. And um, yeah, let's go. Math with Miss B. Math with Miss B. There's a thousand other places that you'd rather be. But you're watching Math with Miss B. Okay, so solving the exponential equation. The first thing that you want to do is you want to rewrite the equations with the same base, because you know it's all about that base, about that base, no trouble. Okay, so basically what that means is I would take the 16 and I would change it into two to the power of four. So then that allows me to use what's called the one-to-one -one property. And the one-to-one -one property says that if my bases are the same, that my exponents are equivalent. So we're gonna make our exponents equivalent. Three X minus eight equals four. And now I just have a regular two-step equation. Do the two-step, do the two-step. Okay, I'm being out of control now. <laughs> so we're gonna add eight to both sides. We're going to divide by three. We're going to get X equals four four okay so very good that's it that was easy right see if this is same problem okay see if you can figure it out all right so we're going to rewrite the equation with the same base so 125 turns into five cubed we're going to use the one-to-one -one property. The one-to-one -one property says that if my bases are the same, the exponents are equivalent to each other. So 3x minus 6 equals 3. So then I solve. Add 6 on both sides. 3x equals 9. Divide by 3. Divide by 3. x equals 3. So easy. OK. So now I have 27 x plus to the x plus 3 and then 9 x minus 1. And it's like, wait a second. How do I get 27 and 9 to match? Well, I would rewrite them with the same base. But what number could I turn 27 into and what number could I turn 9 into that would be the same number? 3. 27 is 3 cubed and 9 is 3 squared. So now that they're the same base, I can use my one-to-one -one property and the one-to-one -one property states that if my bases are the same the exponents are equivalent to each other so i'm going to do three parentheses x plus three equals two parentheses x minus one of course we're going to go ahead and we're going to distribute and now that i've distributed we're going to go ahead and solve so i'm going to get x equals negative 11. These make, you, these make you think, they're like little puzzles, okay? You should be able to try this one on your own. What number can I turn an eight into and a four into? That would be the same number. Did you say two? You would be correct, two cubed and two, two squared. So now use your one-to-one -one property. I'm gonna get three parentheses x plus two, two parentheses x minus three. We're gonna go ahead and distribute. When I distribute, now I can go ahead and solve the equation like normal. Ta-da! X equals negative 12. Okay, so sometimes our bases cannot be made the same. So if I have a 4 and I have a 15, I can't 2 squared, but 15 is not a power of something. So it's like, wait a second, what do I do? Well, when that happens, what you would do is you would take the natural log of both sides. Okay, so when I say that, what I mean is I would say ln x, uh, ln 4 to the x and then ln 15, right? After I do that, I'm going to go ahead and start thinking about my properties. What are my properties of logs? What can I rearrange? What can I do to make this be easier for me? So we're going to use our power rule. So our power rule states that that exponent of x can come to the front and be a coefficient. So we're going to go ahead and move that. That's our power rule right there, right? So I need to solve for x. To get x by itself, that means that I need to get rid of ln4. I'm pausing so that you can digest that information. Now that I move the x to the front, we need to get x by itself. And to do that, I need to get rid of ln4. So I'm gonna divide by ln4. I'm gonna get ln15 over ln4. This is what we call my 
exact answer. X equals ln 15 over ln 4. That is an exact answer. I can leave my answer like that. I can also input this into the calculator and get an approximate answer, okay? And I could do ln 15 divided by ln 4 in the calculator and I could get a pro an approximate answer and that would be 1.95, approximately. Not necessary though, depends on the problem. Okay, similar example, different numbers. Try this one on your own. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to take the natural log of both sides. So ln 5x equals ln 134, right? And we're going to use our power rule. And we're going to move the exponent of x to the front. ln 5 equals ln 134. So I have to solve for x. I do that by getting rid of ln 5. So I'm going to get x equals ln 134 over ln 5. This is my exact answer. I can leave it this way, should I so choose, okay? Or depending on the directions for the problem. But I can also move forward and get an approximate answer, which is 3.04 if I'm rounding to two decimal places. Again, depends on the, the directions. So you have two answers that you need, an exact answer or an approximation. Which one do you want, okay? Example number seven. Okay, so. Similar thing, I have 10 to the power of x, and then I have 120,000. We're gonna take the common log of both sides. Now, why the common log and not the natural log, Miss B? Great question. You're gonna take the common log and not the natural log um, because I have a base of 10. And so remember that the common log is in base 10. So if I take the common log, of both sides, what's going to happen is I can now use my inverse property to cancel out log base 10 of 10. So automatically doing that, I get x equals log 120, log of 120,000. And that's my answer. This is my exact answer right here, and I can just leave that at that. I could also figure out what that is in the calculator for an approximate answer. But that's it. Solve for x. Again, one answer is exact, one answer is approximate. It's that easy, promise. Okay, try this one by yourself, same thing. So base 10, what you gonna do? I hope you guys pause the videos. Okay, so take the common log on both sides. That common log allows me to use my inverse property, so that's going to cancel out log base 10, leave me with x equals log of 8,000. This is our exact answer. This is our approximate answer. Rounded to two decimal spaces. Okay. So then we have 40e 0.6 to the x minus 3 equals 237. Now we're really on to something. This is a lot different than what I'm usually working with. You always want to isolate the exponential term. So if the exponential term is not on its own, let's try to do that, okay? Um, so we're gonna add three to both sides to try to get that to happen, okay? So now I'm gonna get 40 e to the 0 0.6 x equals 240. Again, we're isolating the exponential term. So now I'm gonna get rid of that 40. So e to the 0.6x equals 6. Now, this is back to the regular equations that we've had, right? I have an exponential on one side and then a constant on the other. So we're just going to go ahead and we're going to take the log of both sides. But which log do we want to take? Do we want to take a natural log or do we want to take a common log? Did you say natural? You would be correct. The reason why we're taking a natural log is because natural log is log base e. And I have an e in this problem, so that would only make sense. So natural log e to the 0.6x equals natural, natural log 6. Inverse property, log base e to the e cancels out 0.6x equals ln 6. Div solve for x, divide by 0.6. x equals ln 6 over 0.6. This is my exact answer. 
okay? But also, if I want an approximation, I could figure that out on the calculator and I will get approximately 2.99. Mm-hmm. You got this. Okay, so this is our next problem. Same thing, same problem, different numbers, okay? So what you gonna do? 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 Did you say isolate the exponential term? You're correct. So we're gonna add five, add five to both sides. So then it's gonna give me seven e to the two x equals 63. We're gonna divide by seven, divide by seven. e to the two x equals nine. Take the natural log of both sides. So we're gonna do ln e to the two x equals ln nine. Remember that we can use our inverse property, right? That inverse property tells me ln e to the e cancels out to give me just two x. Two x equals ln nine. We're gonna go ahead and divide by two on both sides. x equals ln nine divided by two. x equals 1.10, approximately. So exact answer and approximate answer. All right, let's get a little crazy because guess what? I cannot isolate that my exponential term because I have an exponent on the left and an exponent on the right. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take the natural log of both sides. Okay, we're gonna use our power rule. So we're gonna move those exponents to be in the front. And the book kind of that I was looking at kind of had these, the ln5 would stay as a constant and I would distribute ln5 in ln5 times x, ln5 times negative two, and then ln4 times two x and ln4 times. I decided to do the approximations instead, okay? Um, but again, you have to pay attention to what the problem wants. Did the problem want um, an exact answer or an approximation answer? I'm doing the approximation for now. Okay, but just know that you could distribute ln4 instead of using 1.39, right? It just looks a lot crazier. Um, so I decided to use the approximations, distributed the approximations, and then solve for x. Dividing. This answer is way off. And the reason why this answer is way off is because I use decimals back in like step four, right? So if I truncated, or sorry, if I estimated those answers and then I did math with those, with those um, uh, rounded, why am I saying estimated? With those, I did math with the rounded numbers. Every time I do math now, my answer is rounded a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. So this answer is super off. It's like six, it's negative six still, but it's supposed to be like more than that anyway. I'm just saying, this is how you do the problem. <laughs> okay, next. Um, this is the hard one, okay? So it's not really that hard though. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is, when you have a problem like this, I have e to the two x, and then I also have negative four e to the x. I can't combine those, they're not like terms, right? Because the exponents are different. That, when you see this happen, this is a trinomial, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna factor that trinomial. Okay, like it was x squared minus x minus three. I factor that. Once I factor that, we're gonna set it e equal to zero. So I get e to the x equals three. We're gonna take the natural log of both sides. That lets me use the inverse property. I get x equals ln three or x equals approximately 1.12. Now we're gonna set the other one, e to the x minus one equals zero, plus one plus one. I'm gonna get e to the x equals one. If you remember your zero exponent properties, anything to the zero power equals one, so the x has to be zero. So those are my two answers for that. Ta-da! That's it. In a nutshell. That kinda hurted. Um, what was I going to say? 
go back through the video. See if you could do it without my help. Make sure you're taking some notes. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Tell everybody that you know this is a helpful channel, a little bit more entertaining than all the other dry channels out there <laughs> that are doing that. And um, yeah, I'll see you in the next one.